Hey guys and girls and welcome to a new pickup video. Right, for this next video we've got ourselves a mishmash of things to show off so let's not dilly dally around, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I've got is a little something that I found for cheap, I can't remember how much I got it for, I think it was like only a, a few quid or what have you, and it is the Game Boy Camera Yellow Edition. Now, to say that I've been after this for some time is a slight lie. I mean, I've always wanted to get hold of a, a, a Game Boy camera again because I used to have the uh, the red camera. But I could take it or leave it if I owned one or not. But I saw this in CEX and it was only a few quid. And I thought to myself, well, it's yellow. You know, yellow is not one of my favourite colours. I mean... The reason why I got red is because red's my favourite colour. Uh, but you know, I thought to myself, it'll be fun to get a, uh, a Game Boy camera again, and I could do like some really weird selfies with it, such as the photo here. I thought that was actually quite um, <laughs> quite fun to take. It took me a while to actually get that set up uh, and get the light right, but I thought it was quite fun to do a, uh, a a mirror selfie in the 21st century in 2019 with a camera from actually it doesn't say what year it's from but I can imagine it's from let me think now I think this is about from 1996 I want to say I'm probably wrong there um, no I'd say 98 actually about a couple of years after that say 90 yeah i want to say 1998 so yeah <laughs> the Game Boy camera you know just a little subject i picked up for fun it's quite fun having this inside the uh, Game Boy advance because you've got it that way around and you've got the screen up there so trying to take pictures with it whilst trying to look at the screen because the screen's upside down it's just like okay that's not gonna work <laughs> so Game Boy camera very cheap i've already got the um the Game Boy printer for it, and I've no doubt got the uh, the link cable that goes with it, but that's been sealed away in storage, so I kind of need to dig that out if I want to use the Game Boy printer again. I'd also need to get some printable paper as well, which I'm sure there's still some, you know, floating around. Hmm. Right, next up is a Super Famicom game, and it is simply Donkey Kong Country 3, or rather Super Donkey Kong 3. I've been umming and ahhing about uh, getting Donkey Kong Country 3 for the longest time because I've heard that it's pretty much the weakest of the three games. But I saw this on eBay and I think it was going for about 10 quid or something like that. It's so easy to get the uh, Super Famicom versions of uh, certain big games for much cheaper than you get the, uh, the Super Nintendo versions, the PAL versions. So. Saw this on eBay, £10. I thought, fuck it, why not give it a go away? It's cheap enough, so I've, I've got the entire trilogy for, I think it's about 20 to £25 in total. Because, you know, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2, I don't think they cost much at all. In fact, I remember Donkey Kong Country 1, I think that was only like a 5 or whatever it was. I'd have to go back to my, um, my eBay uh, history. But yeah, it's actually in really good condition. You know, the book, it's, you know pretty much immaculate. I don't think they they read it that much. There's not really much to learn in Donkey Kong Country. You know, no writing in it, whatever. You know, it's very, very colourful and very, very well illustrated. <laughs> you got, uh, let's just use that as an example. You've got some nice uh, 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 introductions to the cast and what have you. And you've got all these, um, what are they? Bears, I assume. Yeah, so... Um, I don't actually know what the story of Donkey Kong Country 3 is. From the looks of it, they've, you know, invaded Bear Island. <laughs> but I don't know 100% for sure. It's probably something I'll um, I'll have a look on the, on the Wikipedia. On the Wikipedia. And the cartridge, you know, it's in pretty much good condition. And it's got this quick start uh, pamphlet. It's got a map of the overworld on it. It's really, really nice. You know, much nicer than what we get over here. So, yeah, Donkey Kong Country 3, you know. I, I was even considering getting it on the um, on the virtual console. But, again, because, you know, I'd heard that it was the weakest of the three, I thought to myself, well, what's, what's really the point? And, you know, 
technically, well, I can technically getting the physical version is a lot is is just a bit more expensive than getting the uh, the virtual console version. But you know what? I'm actually quite pleased that I've got the um, uh, Super Famicom version because you know it pretty much completes the trilogy. It completes the set, and you know I, I got it for cheap, which is always good. And you don't really really need to know Japanese to play the fundamentals of Donkey Kong Country. The only time when you really need to know Japanese is when you go and see Swanky Kong and then answer his quiz in Donkey Kong Country 2. I'm not too sure about uh, uh, what he does in number 3, so... So yeah, that's that, Donkey Kong Country 3. Right, next up we've got ourselves a couple of um, 3DS games. I don't know if I've showed this one off before, but it is Mario and Luigi Dream Team Brothers. I'm actually really enjoying this. This is currently in my uh, 3DS, which... I'm not sure where it is at the moment, it's probably nearby somewhere. But yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. You know, as far as RPGs are concerned, I really can get into the Mario RPGs because there's just, there's a degree of, you know, fun and the battle system being fair in the Mario RPGs. So that's one reason why I like them. Um, yeah, it doesn't come with an instruction manual, which I assume was probably the case in a lot of 3DS games nowadays, unfortunately. But I could be wrong. How much did this set me back? Oh, this only set me back eight quid. So yeah. So when I'm done playing this, it's such a good lark at the moment. I'm enjoying uh, Sleepy Luigi in a minute, just pissing about with his face on the bottom screen. Um, yeah. Once I'm finished with this, I'm going to head straight to uh, Paper Jam Brothers, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Because you know, the Paper Mario um, one and two, Paper Mario and Paper Mario Thousand Year Door superb sublime games so yeah Mario and Luigi really really good game can't recommend it enough I really do like the Mario and Luigi series as well I still need to get hold of um, uh, Superstar Saga which I know you can get on the 3DS so that's going to be something to look forward to as well right next up this is a game I bought simply because of its um, its reputation as a franchise and that is Super Monkey Ball 3D and the fact that it cost me £6 as well. Now I've read about uh, uh, Monkey Ball 3D and you can see there's a nice nice little booklet there. So maybe um, Mario and Luigi was meant to have a booklet, who knows. If anyone actually owns Mario and Luigi uh, Dream Team Brothers, if you can confirm it's meant to have a booklet that would be nice. But yeah, just basic black and white affair, so there's that. Yeah, uh, I remember reading a couple of reviews of um, Monkey Ball 3D before I actually bought it, and they didn't they didn't give it an overall negative opinion. I think they just gave it like an average review simply because uh, what what did I remember reading? I think they said that it was a bit average, you know, a bit lacking compared to the other Monkey Ball games. But I thought to myself, if that's the case, you know, six pounds, you know. You are pretty much going to get your money's worth if that is the case. If it is lacking in modes and what have you and content compared to the other Monkey Balls. So, uh, yeah. Monkey Ball 3D. Haven't played it yet. So it's something I'm very much looking forward to. Especially if it's just like, you know, a pick up and put down game that you play for about 10 minutes a time. Right, next up. This is a series of PS1 games that I actually picked up very recently. And by picked up, I mean they were given to me by my missus because one of her work colleagues was getting rid of their PlayStation 1 games for whatever reason I didn't ask. So, first game we've got is 007 Racing. I haven't got a clue what this is going to be like or how much racing this is. As you can see, it's kind of, it's missing the... Um, uh, the front of the case, which is a shame, and it's also the platinum version. But as it was free, I'm not going to complain too much. But you say, can you save the world in all new missions of high speed espionage? Ain't got a Scooby, mate. Might be worth trying out, though. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, playing this series again. Right, next up, following the same theme, typical that would be on the bottom, is. Tomorrow Never Dies. Now, if I recall, this is... Isn't this uh, Pierce Brosnan's first um, uh, Bond film? I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, this is, and I quote, the most complete Bond experience. I'm not too sure about that. What sort of game is it? It does look like a... Uh, yeah, it looks like a third-person action-adventure game, obviously, because it's James Bond. But 
yeah. Apparently, uh, this is supposed to be pretty good, so something to look forward to. And again, it's the uh, shiny uh, <laughs> platinum version, so that's that. That's two James Bond games. Not too bad, not too bad. Might be worth streaming that at some point, you know, some of these games. <coughs> Just for a laugh, if nothing else. Right, next up, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Now, I must admit, as far as the... Um, Episodes 1 to 3 are concerned. I've not really been that bothered about them as I saw Phantom Menace in the cinema back when it came out, obviously. <laughs> and it was alright, but it wasn't enough for me to say, right, gonna go see episodes 2 and 3. That just didn't happen. In fact, to this day, I still haven't seen 2 and 3. Um, I'm not quite sure what game this is. This is like another um, third person adventure game as well, so um, who knows how good this is going to be. I mean, I posted a tweet um, a couple of days ago with these five games on there, asking anybody if, you know, these were any good. I didn't get many responses back, with the exception of the responding to the two Bond games, so uh, my hopes aren't high for this. <laughs> but you never know, this could be good, this could be shite. Uh, it's a special bonus, it includes Star Wars Duel of the Fates music video. Okay. Right, next up, this is another licensed game, my goodness, and it is everyone's favourite Batman film, Batman and Robin. <laughs> Obviously not. No, I've not actually seen uh, Batman and Robin to its full extent because I don't know what it is, I think George Clooney kind of makes a really weird Batman, but yeah. Alright, so that was a nice little disc there. Unfortunately, the disc retainer is broken, so I've got to be careful when I put it back in. Uh, booklet, pretty much standard booklet. And what kind of game is Batman and Robin, actually? A doomsday clock is ticking, oh no. 72 hours till Mr. Freeze turns Gotham City into a giant icicle. And it looks like another third-person adventure game. Looks like you can play as Robin as well. Uh, play as Batman, Robin, or Batgirl to thwart Poison Ivy, Bane, and Mr. Freeze's schemes. Sounds like fun. Batman and Robin. <laughs> Again, I have absolutely no idea what it's going to be like, but it's going to be very interesting finding out. Right, last of all, this is a wholly sort of original game, I suppose, from the looks of it, and that is Demolition Racer, made by Infograms. Uh, what we got here? Ice, speed, full impact, racing action, collisions, damage and destruction. So pretty much destruction derby then. Let's have a look inside because I haven't had a proper look in it yet. We've got the manual obviously and we've got, okay, we've got the manual and the uh, and the cover the wrong way around. So let's just put the cover back in place and the case <coughs> isn't in great condition because uh, part of the uh, hinge just broken off, so there we go. But not all of it. And it's got the best of infograms action. Okay, so that's what the disc looks like. <laughs> so yeah, this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. If it's you know anything to do with um, the likes of uh, Destruction Derby and most probably um, uh, Twisted Metal as well, I have no idea. But it doesn't look bad. It just all depends how it plays, obviously. So yeah, five PlayStation 1 games that I have absolutely no idea what they're like, but it's going to be fun finding out. Hmm. Right. Lastly, we've got... Embrace yourselves, guys, because you should know what's coming up after I say this. But I've got myself three Wii U games. I swear to God, that's not going to get old. <laughs> right, first game. I've already got this game on 360 and 3DS, but I thought to myself, you know, let's bulk up the Wii U collection a little bit and, you know, get this game. It was only, what, I think it was like six or eight quid or whatever it was, and that is Resident Evil Revelations. Now, I already know what this game is like. It's a ton of fun. You know, it takes the series back to its uh, survival horror roots. How much did this set me back again? Yeah, there we are. Cost me £6. Very nice. Proper bargain. 
and for a game, you know, I don't need to wonder what it's like. So, of course, the uh, the manual is a pathetic two, three, four, four page affair. Well, technically four pages, yes, but yeah, you guys know what I mean. Yep, pretty much a quick start guide. So not really much, um, not much point given that. Okay, but yeah, Resident Evil Revelations. Still need to actually finish it because I've got. Uh, the furthest I've got is on the 3DS version and I pretty much I think I'm up to the last boss now so I just need to get off my ass and beat him <laughs> right next up this is a game I played the demo of on the 360 version I thought it was alright but it was considerably less bloody uh, than I would have liked and so they re-released it as a new bloodier version I assume and I hope and that is Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge Violence Reborn Experience extreme action on the Razor's Edge as Ninja Gaiden 3 evolves onto Wii U. Hopefully this is going to be better than the uh, original version. Of course, as always, we've got ourselves a pathetic um, instruction uh, manual. It's more of an instruction pamphlet more than anything else, but it's a lot more detailed than, um, than most other pamphlets, so... Uh, it's got that going for it. Uh, it's, it's got some. Um, I think it's got like some new uh, challenge modes in it and what have you. And you can play as uh, Ayane as well from Dead or Alive. So that's always a lot of fun. What's it saying along the top? Oh, that's just part of a sticker. <laughs> I thought there was like a hidden message just uh, just along there, but it, it isn't. It's just part of what I assume is games sticker. It's product protected sticker. So yeah, uh, Ninja Gaiden 3, that makes it now um, uh, the third Ninja Gaiden that I've got now. So yeah, I think I've got Ninja Gaiden 1 for Xbox, uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 for Xbox 360, and now Ninja Gaiden 3 for Wii U. Can I use the... Oh, you need to use the um, uh, the gamepad, but you know what, it's fine. You know, the gamepad is quite comfortable to play with. Right, last game of all, this game is pretty much available across most... In fact, I think all modern platforms at the moment, I assume. Um, I don't know too much about Xbox One or uh, the PlayStation 4, but I know it's available on like last-gen systems. So, um, And uh, I really am denied about what platform to get this on. You know, should I get it on PS3, Xbox 360? In fact, I don't even know if it's available on those two either. It might be, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, do I get it on PC or, or what? So, I decided to get it on Wii U, because why not bulk out the, uh, the library a bit more, even though my Wii U library is quite healthy, and that is Shovel Knight. Now, I have been playing this uh, off and on, and I must admit, I'm really enjoying it, and I actually pretty much thought I would, but yeah, it's actually such an enjoyable game. I, 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 it's just, it's, it's, it's really good. That's pretty much all I can say, you know. You can uphold Shovel Justice with the Shovel Knight Amiibo. I might, like, I might get hold of the other Shovel Knight ami Amiibo at some point. With vibrant graphics and pitch perfect gameplay, Shovel Knight breaks new ground in this 8 bit adventure. I must admit, it is pretty, pretty cool. And of course, um, the disc is in there because it's in the Wii U. And see, this was actually the most expensive uh, of the, uh, the Wii U games I got because I bought all three at once. And it was only 12 quid, which is still really cheap. It's probably cheaper, like on Steam or whatever, but. The fact that, you know, I get the case, get the disc, uh, got a free copy of the Shovel Knight soundtrack, and an actual, actual, oh my fucking god, manual, colour manual, how fucking sexy is that? That is so good. You got the Enchantress there, who looks like Maleficent. That's actually, I think, just from this alone, it's Shovel Knight is definitely worth it and I think you know just from what little I've played of it it certainly is a fun game but I haven't got too far in it so for all I know it could get really really hard further down the line so uh, yeah so uh, that's about it for today's pickups guys so um, yeah thank you all very much for watching and until next time I'll see you next time yep fuck that one up didn't I <laughs> see you later guys <laughs>